My guests today are filmmakers Jimmy Dean and Ash Horn. Now, Jimmy Dean is an award-winning director whose short films have screened at international film festivals. His latest film, Susie, starring BAFTA nominee Helen Ben, premiered at the 36th Galway Film Fleet and was a, and is, I will say, is a Vimeo staff pick. And his previous film, V, had its world premiere at the BFI London Film Festival and was also a Vimeo uh, staff pick. And he is currently developing a debut feature film with the BFI. And up next is Ash Horn, who is an award-winning producer and former creative director at the Academy Award-winning Slick Films, who kick-started his career with two seasons of his musical comedy sitcom, The Midnight Beast on E4, produced by Warp Films. Now, his slate of films for 2024 includes the BIFA qualifying Man Made with low-key films directed by Plum Stupple Harris, starring Harry Gilby, and the BAFTA qualifying and Vimeo staff pick Susie with Slick Films and is an executive producer on Joe Whelan's Marion with OB42 Celeb Film Pictures. I almost said films there, but hey, <laughs> today we are here to discuss their moving short film, Susie. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jimmy Dean and Ash Horn to the show. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> what an intro. What an intro, honestly. Well, I, I tell you what, you know, it's amazing. And as you know, with all of these amazing film festivals and all of the, the academies, there are way too many initials to deal with. <laughs> yeah. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful, but you, you worked it. You worked it. it was great. Well, I, I, I worked it pretty well, but I have to say, first of all, for both of you, how did each of you get into filmmaking? Yeah. Jimmy, do you want to go first? Yeah. So um, I, I went to university and studied film and television production. Um, and then my two grad, like my grad film from that just gave me a few opportunities to, you know, kick on, make some other films. So I made V with Film London and then Susie with Slick Films. And then that's, it's really quite a straightforward journey. I guess I studied and then kept going. <laughs> and Ash? Yeah, for me, I, I suppose, you know, it, it started off with the, with the Midnight Beast, like 10, oh God, not 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's been a long, it's been a long time, big journey. Um, and we would just make our own like DIY music videos. Um, it was just the three of us and we'd upload them to YouTube. Um, so it's kind of like filmmaking, I suppose, like very DIY, very indie. We'd have no budget at all. We just use what we have in front of us to make these music videos. Um, and then from the back of that, we had our own show on E4, which was super lovely. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a dream come true. Um, so from going to, from no budget to a budget was was lovely. Um, so we did that for like 10 years. Um, and then, yeah, I started working with Slick Films um, Yeah, about five years ago with Chris. Um, and that obviously, well, the first film that they came out with was The Silent Child, which won um, the Oscar, um, which is very, very nice. Um, and then, yeah, I've just been helping out with Slick Films, creating my own films like Susie and Please Care and One Letter. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of like it for me, I suppose. Yeah. OK, well, so that means you were there when they won the Oscar for The Silent Child. Yes. Yeah, so um, I got a, I mean, I got a special thanks in the credits. So, I mean, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> you know, not, not nothing too, too big. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was there. I was there when um, the Oscars were happening, actually, um, at the Ham Yard Hotel in London. And yeah, we, we went along, me, my friend Greg and Abby and Chris and Rachel were in LA, obviously. Um, and it was like 3am and it was just a bit of a mad situation. We had like all the different teams around us waiting to hear if they won the Oscar. And then they were like, the silent child. And we just couldn't believe it. Like we just went crazy. We had our own like little circle in the, in the corner of the room and we were a little bit drunk and yeah, we just had a, a bit of a party. So yeah, no, a bit, bit crazy. Well, let me ask you, let me ask both of you this. So uh, of course you Ash were right, right there when they won the Oscar. And, yes. and Jimmy, here is your incredible film, Susie, with Slick Films. Is there an added education of learning uh, even more about filmmaking from those that have won an Oscar? I mean, yeah, of course. I've known, so I've known Chris for uh, nearly 10 years now as well. So I was, I was like, I wasn't involved in the film, but we were chatting quite a lot 
during his festival process for The Silent Child. So we were back and forth anyway. Um, and then to see them win an Oscar was amazing. Um, and obviously, yeah, someone goes and wins an Oscar, you want to hear what they have to say. So Chris has been a good friend of mine for a while anyway. Um, he's been very supportive. You know, the thing about Chris is he's the, it's the same before or after. He would offer you advice, his advice, his opinion before he won an Oscar or not. He hasn't changed at all. He's just so down to earth and helpful. Um, but yeah, I was all ears when it comes to, you know, festivals and all sorts because he's, he's been there and done it. Well, let's talk about this incredible film, Susie. And Jimmy, you di- so you are uh, the director and the writer of this film. What was the inspiration behind it? So the inspiration was semi-autobiographical. It's um, somewhat based on my life and uh, on my mum specifically. Uh, and it was very much about when I grew up, divorce was still sort of taboo, sort of a dirty word. Um, and that didn't really match my experience. So I felt like when my parents told me I, they were getting divorced, it was going to be the sort of like hellish, horrible thing. And it turned out it was more just like two people who had drifted apart and didn't love each other anymore. And I feel like that hadn't been shown on film as much as, certainly not when I was growing up. And it's not something I think is on on film as often as it should be. So that was sort of the basis for it. And from there, it sort of grew into its own thing. And what about you, Ash? Uh, are you a child of divorce? Um, I am. I am indeed. Um, I remember when Jimmy came to me with, with the film. Um, we were at Picture House in Soho. And I was at the time going through a breakup and I was just like, yeah, I can't, I'm not a divorce, um, but I relate to what's going on. We had a dog, so, you know, small, small violin. Um, so I kind of related, related to it um, in that sense. But also, yeah, my parents went through a divorce. So, um, yeah, that's why I connected with the script and wanted to make it with him. You know, <clears throat> this film really highlights something that most films do not when there is a subject of divorce and that is sitting down with the child and finally having to bring the subject up you know it's it's really coming down to ripping the band-aid off um and i look and i and i think back about which which film really highlighted divorce the only film i can really think about at this time is kramer versus kramer and that was decades ago and it was an academy award-winning film that was dustin hoffman and of course that was a little bit on the brutal side of parent versus parent in court but i can't think of another film besides divorce well i guess mrs doubtfire was one of them yeah 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 funny very funny um marriage story as well Mm -hmm. uh no film right um which I think he, he sums up really, really well in that as well. But yeah, Kramer versus Kramer, that was one of my inspirations. Like, yeah. And that's Meryl Streep, isn't it? It's Meryl Streep and um, it is Meryl Streep. Yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah. What? And so Susie is only nine minutes long, <laughs> but the emotion that Helen Bean brings is felt throughout the whole film from the very opening scene um, even to the very end, how did you come to cast her as Susie? Firstly, that's, that's really kind of you to say because um, we're like, I'm really proud of her performance. Um, and, I, and we knew going in that with the type of film it is where you're, you know, with this one character the whole way that you have to have someone who could bring all that, you know, from the opening scene because you're, you're, you're meant to be with her for this whole film, emotionally as well. And we came about, to, like, the casting is such a dream story. Like, I, I, I wish there was more to it other than I'd seen um, Helen in uh, The Virtues by Shane Meadows, where she got nominated for a BAFTA, and she was unbelievable. Like, I could not believe how brilliant and layered and stunning that performance is. And I said to Ash, I was like, I think this is the, this is the person I'd like to approach. Do you think we could get her? And Ash was like, let's try it. Let's do it. So I wrote Helen a letter. She read the letter. She read the script. She connected to it. Um, and she came on board. And it, it was like, I wish all things were as simple as that. But like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, it's never that easy, usually. It's never that easy. But it's a testament to you, Jimmy. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's usually not that easy. But, you know, it's amazing of all of the stories that I've heard in the past couple of years with filmmakers and how casting has happened. Sometimes I think it's just a 
it's a, some of it is a miracle process and then sometimes it's just a divine connection and uh and then it all works out but helen's acting in this film susie is so genuine from the moment she wakes up to the very end of the film her body language the use of her eyes and of course the outward emotion i mean she was literally perfect for this role and and i i have watched uh you know big actors like ian mcclellan and um michael kane and others explain the process of acting and many of them do bring up the fact that acting really comes from the eyes and helen brings it because what made this film magical is you kept this dialogue down to almost nothing and we are following her journey through her emotions yeah that's i mean again that's so kind of you to say um because that's exactly what we were going for um yeah we wanted to make this largely dialogue free it was very much about sitting with someone during the silences in as they approach something they're dreading um and yeah we that's my favorite type of acting is like the subtlety and the stuff that's all in the eyes and like i could reel your films and filmmakers that i think do that amazingly but the important thing is we got helen and it was just about providing her the space to collaborate and bring herself to it um and what you see on the screen is a collaboration between everyone behind the camera and helen who is just like so such a natural on camera and just so understood what we were trying to do and what we were trying to convey and like i'd love to take more credit for it but it is simple as like you you give someone a platform to do it and when they're that good they just create something special well as a director how much work did you actually have to do in directing her because like i said the dialogue is extremely uh, minimal in this film yeah i think that again it's always a collaboration so it's never like for me like go and do this do that it's like a constant dialogue between me and helen as to what we're trying to get across and some of that can be really specific notes when it when it needs to be or it can be really generalized like i i find the most exciting thing about filmmaking is you know discovering it in the room and seeing what magic happens while you're filming so um it's hard to analyze my own process as such but like for me it's just it just depends on what the scene needs and stuff so yeah i was really involved i won't <laughs> say that i didn't do anything but um your job's a lot easier when you're working with someone as intuitive and talented as helen well the the turning point in this film and ladies and gentlemen for a nine minute film there's a turning point and uh <laughs> It's the scene where uh, Susie sits in the chair waiting. The audience feels her dread, her heartbreak. Um, and this is a point where, to me, the emotion, is, it's almost like it's very subtle where it's split in half. I'm watching, because I watched the scene a few times because at first you're thinking, Okay, what is going on? Because to the because when the, from the start of the film to that point, you don't really know where this is going. So mm -hmm. when the husband comes home, and and uh, she says we got to do this now, and I'm like, okay, what does she mean by we have to do this now? And then it's just just so subtle. Then you kind of start to figure out like. Okay. Um, and, but then her acting in that scene is Oscar worthy. I mean, her ability to bring forth that deep of emotion in a scene by herself, not working off another actor's lines or movements is brilliant yeah I, I feel like i'm doing the lion's share of talking here Ash, so i apologize <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> i think it's because like helen like my favorite part about making films working with actors 
And like, I'd had this scene in my head for years and years and like, it comes out exactly how I wanted, but then more because Helen brings more to it than I ever expected. Um, and I'm really glad you said that about the tension. That's all like, it's such a weird thing for a short because you basically can never show someone a short cold anymore because you have to send it with a log line and stuff. But like ideally people would go into this without knowing anything and they would feel that tension. Um, and I think that's really important because it plays into how she's feeling. Um, and that's how you're supposed to feel. Yeah. And a lot of people have, um, well, they've gone into it and they've gone, oh, it's a horror. Like the way it's kind of, it builds up, builds up to that moment. They're like, oh, is what's going to happen? Like, yeah, is the monster going to jump out or whatever? But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an interesting concept that it could be a horror, but it's also just a, you know, a drama as well. Well, like. um, the log line for this film makes you wonder what's the disruption, hmm. but that disruption was really a building process that between a husband and wife, the, the building process to that point is not overnight. It could right. be many months. It could be a couple of years growing apart. Maybe there's something else that happened. And so the disruption mentioned in the log line is a little bit of bait of like, Hmm, what's <laughs> disrupting her day. And it's yeah. really the dread of, of her having to tell her son. But let me ask both of you this, because as I watch that scene, and I'm sure that there are many millions of parents around the world who have had to live through that very moment. Um, for Susie, was it a feeling of failure of being a wife and a mother? Is that part of, of her emotion? Yeah, definitely. It's the, it's the like, it's, it's a misplaced sense, obviously, I think goes without saying, but it's that it's, it's something that I found really apparent growing up and something I really wanted in the script was this sense of guilt over, you know, that you shouldn't break up a family that you shouldn't, you know, and, and I think that's the core of it is she is worried about the effect it's going to have on her son. And she's worried about the effect it's going to have on the people around her. She's, she's not worried about herself. And that's, you know, part of what we wanted to talk about is that in an ideal world, she would be thinking about herself. That's how it should be. But yeah, that's, that's a hundred percent what's going into it. It's that it's breaking up a family unit. It's the guilt. It's the, it's the, the, the taboo of divorce at that time. Um, certainly my mum was one of the first people I knew to get divorced. She was the first person in our family and she felt the weight of that, right? Like the, like my grandma, I think was like, what, what, you know, what, what, what's your grandson going to think? What's James going to think when this happens? Right. It's like these, these things all play into it. Um, and that outpouring of emotion is, yeah. Well, yeah, I was also going to say, yeah, it's go a ahead, bit, Ash. yeah, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we we're brought up to be like, you get a job, then you get married and then, you know, you live happily ever after. And if, if you get a divorce and, you know, you fall out of love with that other person, then it's frowned upon, not frowned upon, but it's just like, oh no, well, you have failed, haven't you? You gave it a good go, but you know, it's not great that it didn't work out. And I think that's what we wanted to get across with the, with the film. It's like, no, it's okay to fall out of love with someone else. Like, the world keeps turning like you still keep living your life um and yeah thing, things sometimes just don't work out and that's that's fine i want to bring up the use of the cinematography because as i was watching the film i went back and i was making notes i was making notes of the opening scene i was making notes of her looking out the window where the camera is on the outside of the window i was noticing the lighting within multiple of the scenes leading up to that moment of dread. I noticed the use of the, and, and I'm probably going way out of bounds here, but if I am, tell me. <laughs> I noticed the use of the color blue in the film. There is the blue wall behind uh, the bed in the bedroom. There's this blue uh, cast upon her looking out the window her living with the lights off during the day. Uh, so as I was making all these notes, I was wondering, um, 
was it the colorization of the cinematography and the lighting based on her her fear and her dread of that going to that moment or was Susie possibly dealing with depression that may have led to the divorce? Pretty good question. Yeah. Yeah. I think we worked, we we worked like tirelessly with the the cinematography. Firstly is all the magic of Anna McDonald, our cinematographer and our production designer, Greg Bradlaugh. Um, that have worked so well together as a unit to create like the look of the film, which I'm really, really proud of. Um, yeah, the blue color scheme was in there from the start. It was in a lot of our reference images. Um, I think it's yeah, a, a totally fine to make that leap, you know, with what you're saying, because yeah, feeling blue, right? Like I don't want to, you know, over-instruct it, but well, it's that, there. That's it's, how, that's how I read it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah, okay. but that's, so many of our references that were also blue it's the same thing that's how you, you, you like that's how you feel and that's what that ended up being naturally in the film and then afterwards you sort of place together and you're like oh yeah i can see why we ended up doing it like that you know yeah well yeah because um and there was something else that i noticed too you kept the camera shots very static there was not a whole lot of movement there wasn't this uh you know there wasn't a slide or a pan or a jib being used, it's very static shots to where the the film flowed from scene to scene because you're you're forcing the audience to keep their focus solely on her and barely allow us to go outside her realm. Yeah. I mean, even down to the choice of not using any any music to make you feel a certain emotion, right? Like, I'm not a fan of that anyway, but we just wanted the audience to just sit there with this person living through the day. Um, and yeah, no, it's, it's great that you noticed that. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And now you just bring to light something that I did not notice and that that was the lack of a music uh, background, better a score in this film which really plays more to keep our emotions focused solely on on Susie's um, Susie's day, which was br- yes, a brilliant I, move. Never yeah, even thought you. about that because you're right. Music has a tendency to for, to cause an audience um, yes. to feel. But boy, you bring this film to where we have to feel the loneliness. Um, the pain, the dread, uh, there's, there's nothing to hold on to, you know, uh, you have to face what's coming. Uh, there is no lifeline. So this is powerful. Yeah. We should get you to do all our interviews for us. Yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, that's perfect. <laughs> Wait for um, the review. <laughs> <laughs> it'll no, be even better <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah i guess all the part of it was that like her day is so silent and we wanted the we want your you want your audience to sit in that and i think the best thing about filmmaking for me is when you emotionally connect with what's going on so susie has to sit in silence all day so so do we um and like we knew that when we made the film like this, it's, some people were going to really get it and hopefully love it. But then for some people, it's just not going to be their thing, right? And and that's fine. Like, that's something we're, we, we were kind of bold and excited about throughout. And the fact that you love it's a real testament to hopefully some of our choices paid off. Well, you also did something that um, I think it's a very common emotion. And it was done by the fact that how the color changed in the film. Hmm. So... When um, they take the car ride and um, and that's really for to bring some type of uh, comfort to the child and to let them know that everything's going to be OK. But the colorization is when the door opens to his apartment. Mm. It's yellow. It's brighter. It's the, the exact color opposite of blue. And, but you hear, you know, what I loved is you never technically see him on camera, the father, you hear his voice, 
that brings forth, a, a, I guess, a bit of a, an authoritative type tone without ever seeing him. So we don't judge him by the way he looks or whatever or his man, mannerisms. So that was a brilliant move. And with this, this colorization of being that when they walk in, it's this yellow cast. It's like, hey, it's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And I, was, um, I wasn't amazed. I was, how, I'm trying to figure out the right word for this. When he speaks, he's showing his son around the apartment like check this out and look at this hey this is this is where your, your room is going to be when you're here with me and 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 trying to bring some sort of happiness to a a sad situation but aren't fathers really like that most of the time where it's the wife and mother for the most part that is getting the brunt of the dark emotion and the guy comes around acting like um, mr fix it yeah yeah because i mean i suppose as men we are ingrained in society to fix things right and we always want to fix things when sometimes all we need to do is just let things play out and be um but i just want to say you know that's you know the the father was played by alex Lowe, um and we haven't mentioned it yet but he's he's quite a big actor over here and it's it you know it's it's crazy that he even wanted to do the role because it wasn't you know there wasn't many lines um, you see his back for the majority of it, but then there's obviously there, there's one there's one moment where you see his expression. It's like very somber, and like yeah, I mean, he smashed it obviously as a as a role. But um, yeah, it's just crazy to have him involved with the project, really, with you know the small part it was. Yeah, I yeah. mean, um, yeah, no, no, go ahead, Jimmy. I was just gonna say, and the, it's just interesting that you picked up on that color um, change as well because that was like that was in the plan, right? It was um, that, especially with, we, we sat down production designer, um, so Greg, Anna, the cinematographer, and our um, costume designer, Caitlin Batchelor. And that was very much a part of it. I think at the start of the film, she wears her like uh, pajamas are like blue, so she blends into her environment. And by the end, she sort of sticks out within it. And these are these kind of things that like are nice in theory, but then when you work with talented people, they make those things happen. Um, and that's the first time someone's ever mentioned it. So I find that really gratifying that those conversations years ago have paid off. Um, well, so thank you. Well, here, here's what makes to me great filmmakers and, and both of you fall into this category. You create a film, you have a great script, you've got a, a great cast, the cinematography is actually part of the story, even though the general audience never figures stuff like that out. But, you know, all three of us understand that that is part of storytelling. Um, Sometimes I call it the, uh, you know, you got to be Stanley Kubrick every now and then. You've got to place things in the film in a scene that people may not notice, but it's there, part of the storyline. It could be, it could be a picture hanging in the background that's part of the story, but no one may never notice it uh, except, I don't know, maybe people like me who lo- who will dissect a film. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, but it's all of these elements that come together. And it doesn't matter if the film is nine minutes long, 20 minutes long, or if it's two hours long. You've got to have all of these elements to tell a story. But it's more important when you're telling a story that's a drama like Susie. And you mentioned the word horror early on. Did some people actually think Susie was a horror film? Um, well, yeah, I think there was there was an interview that you did, um, Jimmy, and I think the, the person interviewing you was like, oh, I thought it was more of a, it was a horror film. Like, I think he brought it up and I was like, you know, what? I, I can definitely see that. I suppose a bit like uh, Zone of Interest, right? Jonathan Glazer's film. Um, I see that as a horror. Like that, that is, that is obviously a horror film, um, but dressed up in a, a certain way, you know? And I see Susie like that as well. Now, the more I think about it, um, I don't know about you, Jimmy, but I think there are horror elements to it. Well, I, it was always meant to be slightly, I mean, it, that is, uh, yeah, she is living out a horror of her day. Like right. that is, that she is living out the worst day that she can think of at the time. So it was certainly like, that's why I get really pleased when you mentioned the tension at the start, like, 
that's always meant to be there as like what is going on and what can make someone feel like this um and if people's minds wander there like great i think that means we've done something really different and interesting um but it was always about yeah just living her horror i guess um and i love that people read it that way and and that's exactly what this film is and i love the fact where uh you never show the reaction of the child because mm -hmm. this is really about the mother wife side and which I think a lot of times in divorce, um, the hurt is harder. I know the hurt can be, you know, even on the husband's side and, and every situation is different, but in this film, I love the way that you take a moment of a failing marriage and you, you, and it's this pinpointed moment when a child is involved. And even when you ended it, it's like, okay, you know, the band aid's been pulled off and then, um, just let the story go wherever, you know, the audience wants it to go. Uh, with this film though, how did it, how long did it take you to film it? Hmm. So it took us, it was two days, wasn't it, Jimmy? It was it was two relentless days. I mean, yes, we we had eleven setups, um, but yeah, it was it was a lot to get through each day, and you know, it was just yeah, a great crew to work with. Everyone was just so positive, um, and everyone was there to tell the story. So you know, I love working with those kinds of people. You know, they're not doing it for a paycheck; they want to do it because they love the story we're trying to tell. Yeah, and it also helps you to meet the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean between us the budget was um it was five thousand pounds really so, yeah so we we had no money to make it it was literally done out of the love for susie out of everyone there on set um through friends family and people that we worked with in the past um even the actors like everyone just wanted to be a part of the story so that's what it means so much to us that you know other people are now enjoying it as well so yeah well, what has the audience's response to the film been so far? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been great. I mean, you know, we, we got a Vimeo staff pick, which is um, unbelievable. I, I didn't expect that at all. Um, and yeah, as accolades go, that's, you know, something that I've always, <laughs> I mean, it couldn't even dream of, you know. Um, but yeah, it's been a great response. Like my, my mum's watched it. She's enjoyed it. Um, it's always an awkward situation when you're showing your parents um, your version of how you saw the divorce. Um, but yeah, they, they, they've enjoyed it as a film. Um, <laughs> well, did, did, did they take it personally? Um, no, no, <laughs> they, they just enjoy it. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, they just, they just enjoyed it. So. so it's like, oh son, so this is what you do for a living. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You make um, films on, on hardly any money at all and um, yeah, try and get through life. So yeah, that's, that's, what you know, I think, I think filmmakers have an easier time explaining to their parents what they actually do. And it's, yeah. and it's more widely accepted than those that become musicians because then the parents are like, can't you get a real job? <laughs> well, I've been both. I was a musician, a musician for 10 years. Um, and thankfully, my parents came to every gig and they, they really enjoyed that. So they knew what I did. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't too awkward, that conversation. Well, <laughs> what, what are your hopes for this film? I, I just hope that it gets seen by as many people as possible still. Um, I, would, I would love for it to be watched by more people outside of the, the film community as well. Like I did a screening in my hometown with my mum and my dad there, funny enough. Um, and we showed that to a lot of like my mum's friends um people who wouldn't usually go to short film festivals and they were like oh my god i loved like i loved it i really touched to see them being represented on screen because i think that's part of what we wanted to do is take a woman who isn't the star of many films the character not helen um and then put that person front and center it was always about a single mum from a regional town and then when my mum and my mum's friends watched it, they were like, that really spoke to my experience or that really spoke to part of my experience. And like, so I would love for more people who don't usually seek out this kind of stuff to see it. I think that would be amazing. But until then, we're just happy anyone watches it and anyone who likes it, it means the world to us. So I think that's my hope for it, really. So the general public can actually see this on Vimeo? 
Yes. Yeah, you can go and see it now on, on Vimeo, yeah. Okay, well, all right, let me ask you this, so that way I can, because I'm still trying to understand the whole film festival side of things, especially when it comes to the festivals that are in the category of being uh, Oscar qualifiers. Mm. Um, most of the films that I've seen are never seen by the general public. So if your film becomes a Vimeo staff pick and the public can actually see it, that doesn't prevent you from being Oscar qualified, does it? Um, it doesn't. I think there are there are no well, uh, the rules aren't as strict as they used to be. I don't think because there there have been films in the past. I think like last year's Oscars, um, there was a film that had already been released on Omeletto, um and was still shortlisted. Um, so yeah, I think it could it could potentially still qualify, but we'd have to win an Oscar qualifying film festival, which would yeah. That yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I would say you you got a good chance. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a good opportunity to say if there's any Oscar qual- qualifying festivals who want to <laughs> screw Boozy, we would be more than you know we'd be privileged to be part of it. But um, yeah, we made the decision to put it on Vimeo, get it out to a wider audience, um, and the response has been really lovely so far, and hopefully that can continue to happen. So we'd love for people to watch the film on Vimeo. And of course, we'd love it to have more of a festival life if there are any festivals who watch it and would love it to be part of the program. Well, have, have, are, you, are you still submitting the film to the festivals? We are. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we are. But budgets be budgets. And so, you know, <laughs> we're doing our best. <laughs> yeah, you have to submit, but then you, then, then you have to pray that they're going to say yes and... Uh, and, and then show the film. So, uh, yeah, I get it. It's, it, it is a, um, it's a long and winding road. <laughs> yes, it is. And you're constantly checking either like film freeway, whether you've got in something. So it can also, yeah, drive you a little bit crazy in that, in that case. as Well, <laughs> well this is ladies and gentlemen, Susie is a stellar short film. I, as many of you know, I'm a lover of short film. I would rather sit and watch short films and features uh, any day of the week, uh, because you have to be focused when it comes to creating a short film. And Susie is a very well focused film, very minimalistic in it, in its uh, uh, objective, and it works. I mean, Helen B. And my gosh, you could have gotten a better actress for the part of Susie. Uh, the direction of this film is stellar. The writing, the storytelling, the cam, the minimal camera movements is part of its impact, and uh, of course the colorization. I mean, um, <laughs> even though I noticed that, uh, <clears throat> you know, to me that's the, like the little secret to a lot of the filmmakers. It's the colorizations telling the story, even though the audience may never figure it out. But this one does from beginning to end. Uh, for both of you, um, what else is coming up? In 2024. Well, uh, I've got a few uh, films um, in development at the moment um, with some exciting actors attached, um, which I can't really say <laughs> right now. But um, yeah, got some some fun fun projects coming up. So yeah. Hey Jimmy, what about you? Uh, so my first features in development with the BFI at the moment um, with T Shop Productions. So been amazing working with them um, we've got the script at a really beautiful stage been working with an amazing writer called Hannah Lee Pryor who's doing an incredible job adapting a really wonderful short story so just fingers crossed we have the opportunity to make that because um, I think it could be really really nice well I can't wait and when uh, you get those films done you got to come back we'd love to we'd love yeah. to thank you for being so kind about our film as well yeah. like it's, it's so lovely to hear it's so yeah. nice I wasn't just being kind. I was being honest. <laughs> <laughs> I like your honesty. I like that. <laughs> well, you're, you're very welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, the short film Susie is deep into the film festival circuit, but it's making waves with audiences around the world. It is a Vimeo staff pick. So go on Vimeo, look up Susie, spend the nine minutes. And if you're a filmmaker... Watch it two or three times. You may actually learn something that you can take and to use into your next film. The greatest thing about the film industry is this and the community of filmmakers. 
watch each other's projects, learn from one another, and connect. There is no tighter community than the filmmaking community, but Susie, this one is making waves. And only time will tell. <clears throat> and I'm going to put a little side note on this movie, Susie, because to me, it could well be looking at a possible Oscar qualifying uh, <clears throat> festival because this film deserves it. And it is a great film. And to be so early into the season with a film this brilliant is a breath of fresh air. So when you get the chance to see Susie, go to Vimeo. Place your, <clears throat> place your focus on the acting of Helen Bean, which makes this film larger than life. Yeah, it may be only nine minutes long, but the emotion it leaves with you will last far longer. Well, I want to thank you, Jimmy and Ash, for sharing your film with us today. Thank you. Um, thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us, and thank you so much for all your kind words. Like, you probably see me smirking throughout. But I really, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome, and I and I love the humility from both of you. And uh, but, but you do have a great film uh, in your hands, and the world is is waiting to watch this film. And ladies and gentlemen, again, head over to Vimeo. It's a staff pick. Just type in Suzy. S-U-Z-I-E and uh, look for Helen being the actress and that is the film you need to watch today. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch all of the replays of our interviews with the top film directors, producers and screenwriters as well as actors, even composers and stunt people at Bond on Cinema. We're also available on YouTube and a dozen audio platforms as well. So I want to thank you for watching and listening. And as for me... I'll see you at the movies or from the red carpet.